Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and take a comfortable seat. You're welcome to close your eyes. And we're in the, the season of Vata in Ayurveda. So let's connect to the earth. So noticing the support beneath you and lengthening your spine. And then dropping your awareness down into the space of your heart. And this doesn't have to be like the space of your physical heart, but the more energetic heart center. In the, the space of your heart, the, the mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, all of these come together in harmony in the space of the heart. And we know below the heart is the diaphragm. So dropping into your ujjayi breathing. And balancing the inhale with your exhale. You hear the sound of the ujjayi with your inner ear. And is, is the sound that you hear smooth? Is the tone that comes down the back of the throat to create the ujjayi sound? Is it smooth? All the way through your exhale. And is it smooth all the way through the inhale? And if you find a thought, a thought that comes in, so let go of the thought, just release it like, like the clouds that move through the sky. 
let it go by without attaching to it, without interpreting it. So that you can stay in this moment of the presence of your breath and the presence in your heart. about two more breaths. See if you can keep your attention on the smooth, balanced breath. And at the bottom of your next exhale, Release any control on your breath. Join your hands together in front of your heart. And this morning, I'll sing, and you're welcome to join me we're going to sing Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bunaktu, Saha Vidyam Karava Vaai, Teja Sina Thomas Tu, Ma Vidvisha Vaai. Together, together may we be protected, together may we be nourished. May our practice have great energy and may the practice illuminate the darkness. And may we continue to find love and dispel any hatred. May we move from this place of our heart in our minds, and in our words. So we won't chant, we won't start with Om. We're just gonna start with the chant. So take a deep inhale. Sahana Baba Tu Sahana Bunak Tu Savidyam Karava Vai Teja Spina Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. And then with your next exhale, you can bow your head towards your heart. Release your hands and lift your gaze. We're going to go ahead and um, come up to standing. So I'm just going to uh, make sure everybody's muted just so that if there's any background sound, um, it won't be 
you know, disturbing, but you're welcome, of course, to unmute yourself at any time and ask a question. And we're gonna start in standing, even though that's not what Diego is demonstrating. <laughs> All right, so let's have our blocks available. Let's take a white stance on your mat. We can put the blocks down. We know that we're going to need them. I'm going to need my glasses so I can see you better. All right, so taking a white stance, let's make the feet parallel. We've been working a lot with the heels. We're going to keep working with that um, this morning. So even as you take a white stance right now, just noticing, you can check. I don't want the feet to be pigeon-toed. I just want the second toes to be parallel. So even like the second toe would be a little parallel with each other. Let's take the hands up on the hips. Inhale, lift through the top of the breastbone. And exhale, back forward. We'll bring the hands down to the ground and then walk them forward, either on your yoga mat, I mean on your blocks, or hands on the ground. You're taking downward dog arms. You can be up on your finger pads if that's easier for you. I kind of like that. It, it, it really energizes my arms right now. But please use blocks. Bring the ground closer if you need that in order to open the backs of your knees this morning. Begin to drop into the Ujjayi breathing again. And, and notice what happens when you start to reach from, from the inner knee all the way to the inner heel. What happens to the pelvis? And then lengthening the spine, lengthening back. So even though you strongly reach to the hands, you're taking the rib cage toward the pelvis. And then let's go ahead. We're gonna walk the hands back. Shift them up to your hips. And inhale, come up to standing. We'll step the feet back together. Inhale, lift your arms up towards the sky. And exhale, bring your hands back in front of your heart. One more time. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, hands in Anjali Mudra. Release both of your arms and notice where the weight is falling. You can take mountain pose. Where is the weight falling in your footprints? Is the weight, I like to check, I go, okay, is my weight in my toes or my heels? I want the weight to be more in the heel. And then I go into my heels and notice, is the weight balanced in my heels? Is there more weight on my outer heels? Is there more weight on the inner heel? How do I balance the weight in the heels themselves? And, and how does that affect the rest of my body and how I even feel um, movement, like the, the energy inside my body rise. You can experiment. If you put more weight in the, in the toes, does the, does the energy from the earth, we could say the earth chi, does it rise all the way up or not? Or does it feel like it stops? And if you bring the weight toward the heels, what happens to that, that earth chi as it comes up into you?
All right, let's inhale, lift the arms again. Inhale, and with the exhale, we're coming to Utkatasana, chair pose. We're gonna be here for two breaths, so you know, I know this pose takes a lot of energy. Your next inhale, rise. Exhale, take the arms wide. All right, let's take your blocks and we're gonna take a um, triangle pose. So we step the feet apart, go to your right first. So a block at the outer um, right shin. And let's have your other block, your second block, it can either be stacked on there or let's have it um, in front also on the same side of your mat right now. Um, we'll see. I might need it there, I might not. But I just want to have it handy in case. All right, you ready? Inhale the arms out. And exhale, triangle. Both legs are straight. Pelvis is moving towards the back leg. I like to take my arm on my hip usually to start. Where's the weight in the front heel? And, and, and on the back leg, what happens if we go from the outer heel towards the little toe of the back foot? Trying to turn the thoracic spine towards the sky. And maybe on the arm. and maybe the gaze, depending on what's happening with your, your neck. And we'll inhale, come up. I like, you can take your block with you. Leave that other one there, it's okay. We're gonna do it this way. I know you're like, whatever, Lynn, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's like, <laughs> don't worry, right? Okay, ready? Here we go, second side. Inhale the arms out and exhale, triangle pose. Back hand on the hip. We've been talking a lot about where's the weight falling in the front foot. So I go there first. I notice is there more weight on the outer heel or can I balance the weight on the front leg? through the whole, whole leg, the whole leg. And what happens, I'm gonna just lengthen a little from the outer back heel towards my little toe. And then start to turn the spine. Add the arm. So that the space of my heart Turning up towards the sky. Can your heart be expansive? Right? We have a blue sky in, in Oregon today. So can I um, find that expansiveness of my heart through both my hands? And we'll inhale, come up. Let's make the feet parallel. Hands up on the hips. Exhale, bow forward. Let's walk the hands to go between the feet if your hamstrings let you. Of course, the hands can be on blocks. We're just bowing down towards the ground. Your next inhale, come halfway up. So you're gonna walk the hands out. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, come back up. Step the feet together. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, your hands back in front of your heart. One more time. Inhale, lift both arms. And exhale, the hands in front of the heart. Release the hands. Let's take a strap just to open the front of the chest a little bit with the with your strap. So taking the strap with the hands about shoulder width. And 
And then we're gonna, where the weight falls is gonna be important here. So, so um, in the heels, inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, go a little wider with your arms. Check that the back of the hand, the back of the wrist is lined up with your forearm. And your next exhale, go ahead and bend the elbows. So the elbows are about the height of your shoulders. And now let's start to take the wrists back. Okay, we have to go kind of slow because sometimes we, we hurry too much. So I want to drop down into the top of the breastbone, lift the top of the breastbone up. Top of the lungs. That space of the heart. And then we'll inhale, lift the arms back up. And exhale, bring the arms down. We'll take the strap in one hand just to allow the arms to dangle. I'm gonna do just one more of those. We're gonna, once again, we're gonna take the strap, inhale, lift it up, exhale, go a little wider, bend the elbows, take a deep inhale, and with your exhale, start to lift the top of the breastbone. Start to reach the hands back. Keep lifting, so broaden from, from the sternum, both sides of the sternum, through the chest, all the way to the upper arm bone. And also, can you roll the collarbones up, the inner collarbone, Outer collarbone rolling up. Deep breathing, so you're practicing your ujjayi still. And then we'll inhale, bring the arms back up. Exhale, release the arms. Hold the strap in one hand. One last thing with the arms. We're gonna take the strap again. We've done this one before where we're gonna be um, really reaching out the shoulder all the way to the arms. So if you go ahead and inhale, lift both arms. And then as you exhale, you go Wider, wider, you keep reaching from the shoulder joint out the arms, all the way out through the hands, the strap comes all the way down. Put the strap back in one hand. So I don't, I want to make sure, so we have to remember, right, the, the upper arm bone, that shoulder joint is pretty shallow. I want that upper arm bone to be inside the joint. So as I take my arms and I go wider and out and down, I don't feel any sort of clunk, clunk, nothing like that. If I'm really extending all the way out as I'm moving. So again, inhale, lift the arms up. So it's like we're, we're going to decompress the movement. We've got the arms up. We're going to take another breath. And exhale, we let the, the strap slide through the hands, keeps going, keeps going all the way out, back, and down.
You could do this, you know, many times. You can do it again. I can go in, up with the arms, and then let the strap slide through my hands as I go wide, wide, wide. And... All right, now let's sit the strap aside. So now what we're going to do, um, let's bring your blocks in front of you and take Uttanasana for a moment. Forward fold after doing that upper back opening. So bowing forward towards the ground, letting things turn back in so that the, the top of the breastbone can turn in, the heart can turn in. And then we'll inhale halfway. Shift the hands to the hips and come up to standing. We're gonna go back to a uh, triangle. This time um, you will want both blocks to be over towards your right. And that's because you're gonna do a little series where you're gonna go, in a moment we'll go, you'll be going triangle, then we're going to turn towards the ground and we're going to go low lunge. We'll get all balanced there. Then we can, we can take our blocks if we need them because we're going to turn into a wide legged forward fold and some variation. And then we're going to come back up and then we're going to move our blocks and we're going to go to the second side. Okay? So blocks off to your right. Coming up to standing, you're set up for triangle in the legs, in the span, in the width between um, the feet. And then when you're ready, let's inhale the arms out. And exhale to triangle pose. So you might bring the hand on the hip as you, as you move the pelvis away from the front leg. Give yourself plenty of height under that right hand. Balance the weight in the front foot. Connect into the back heel. And turning the torso towards the sky, heart turns up, arm, and maybe the gaze. Another deep inhale. With your exhale, you're turning towards the ground. Pick up the back foot, come into a low lunge. You might have to step the back foot a little out to your left. You can have hands on the blocks or hands on the ground, but balance the weight in the hips. And from the, the front heel, the right heel, reach into the ground. And reach all the way back into the back heel. And then can, on the inhale, there you are. With your next exhale, you begin to walk the torso around towards the midline. Make both feet parallel. Let's walk out the downward dog arms. So we can either be on blocks with our hands. Deep breathing. And then uh, you can, if the hands are on blocks, pull the blocks back. Shift your hands up to your hips and come up to standing. We're gonna spin the feet to your left. So the back heel goes back, front heel comes in. I'm gonna take 
both my blocks over towards the left side. Come back up to standing. And inhale the arms out. And exhale, triangle. So what happens when you draw the left greater trochanter into midline? What happens? Does that correspond to how the weight falls into the, the front heel? Then we turn the heart open. Maybe the arm comes up, maybe the gaze. Ujjayi. Then we're going to exhale and turn towards the floor. Pick up the back heel. Make sure the feet are hip distance. Bring come to a lunge. Hands on blocks or hands on the earth. Then we're going to turn back to the right. We're going back into a wide-legged position. We can move our blocks with us. This time we're going to take a twist. So let's bring your, your right hand into that space between your two hands, either on a block or the ground. Right hand up on the hip. Sorry. Yeah, that's correct. Reach straight down into the ground as you turn. Sorry, maybe it's your, you're going, you had right hand in the midline. There we go. Right hand upon that. Exhale to center. Switch your hands. When you're ready, reaching into the earth and turning the other way. Balanced breathing. A lot of awareness in what's happening through the knees, right? Ingrid, being careful. Back to center. And then we're going to go ahead and shift the hands to the hips. Come back up to standing. Step the feet back together. Feet are hip distance. Exhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Use your Ujjayi. Inhaling deeply, exhale, bow towards the ground. Hands find either blocks or the floor. Inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands on Jali Mudra. I'm going to take Rikshasana, tree pose. So if you want to be next to a wall, you could go and stand with the uh, left side of your body at the wall because you're going to be standing on your right leg. I'm not going to mirror you. I'm going to stand on my right as well. So if you want to be by the wall, left side of the body is by the wall. And then when you're ready, draw that right outer hip towards midline. Tone all the way up the inseam of the right leg and begin to unweight the left foot. Reaching into the earth. <laughs> I 
bring your left foot up to wherever it needs to nestle. Could be the inner um, shin, bridge the knee, or come to the inner thigh. Release, step down. Let's shift to the left, the left outer hip in, tone the left inner thigh, unweight the knee, the foot. Release the arms, release the foot. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, come up. Good. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. And then standing at the top of the mat, if you're not already, we'll inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, arms up. Exhale, chair pose. Oh, not another chair pose. And then way back in the heels. We let go of the story. Bow forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, downward facing dog or puppy pose. Reaching all the way to the finger pads and the knuckles. Use your inhale to come to plank. And your next exhale to go back to downward facing dog. So for the next two, I want you to use the inhale to go to plank. And your exhale to move back to downward dog. We do one more. The inhale brings you to plank. And the exhale back, downward facing dog. Reaching all the way back into the, the inner heel, across to the outer heel. You inhale and Pick up the right leg and exhale, right foot forward. Grab your blocks. And reaching all the way from, you reach it down into the front heel, and you reach back from the um, left sit bone, inner thigh, inner heel. And let's make this transition upright. Arms in any position. Gaze either straight ahead or up towards the sky. Inhale the arms wide. Keep 
Keep reaching back, you're bowing forward again. Take the left block a little closer to the big toe. So left hand on the block, right hand up on your hip. Keep reaching from the left sit bone, left inner hamstring all the way to the left heel as you turn towards the right for revolved Parshvakanasana, revolved side angle. And you might add the right arm. You don't have to, but you might. Lengthening through from the left armpit to the left crest of the pelvis. Exhale, turn towards the ground. You can move your blocks out of the way. Step back. Downward facing dog or puppy. Still working with your Ujjayi breath. And then with the next inhale, let's lift the left leg. And exhale, left foot forward. We could bring the blocks under the hands if they're not. Just to give us a little help in this transition. We need help during transitions. We don't want to be attached to the outcome. So when you're ready, come into the upright lunge. Arms in any position, gaze either straight ahead or up towards the sky. Inhale the arms wide, exhale, bow forward. We could take left hand on the hip, right hand down on the block. You could scoot it a little closer to the left big toe, not right beside it. Keep reaching from right sit bone, right inner hamstring, all the way to the right inner heel, and begin to turn towards the left for revolved Parashvakanasana, Parita Parashvakanasana. So a lot of strength at the back um, inner thigh. A lot of strength through the back heel. Yeah, that looks so good, Lise. That's it. That's it. You got the head and everything, the neck. Great. Great. Good. Good, everyone. Because a lot of times, what, I love this, because a lot of times what happens is the back uh, leg turns, but there looks like a lot of steadiness. Beautiful. And then you'll turn back towards the earth, back to the ground. Let's inhale, step forward, and exhale, bow in Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up. And exhale, forward fold. And releasing, again, the head, the neck, We'll inhale halfway. So Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, hands to the hips. And the inhale, rise. Exhale, Anjali Mudra.
You can notice your heart rate after that work. Your connection to the ground. Release the arms. And let's step your right foot back. We're going to step the right foot back. We'll give the, the back foot just a slight turnout. We're going towards um, Parashvottanasana, the forward fold. Let's inhale, reach the arms out. And exhale, both legs stay straight as you bow forward. Hands can come to blocks. What I want to notice is, is there more weight in my front leg than in my back leg? So how do I reach into the earth with my front leg, transfer that weight through my pelvis to my back leg. And then can I keep that and maybe release a little more forward? Probably depends on my hamstrings, right? You know, what kind of hamstrings do I have? But whatever length you're able to get, release the forehead. Keep reaching into the back leg the back heel. All right. And then we're going to shift the hands out wide and begin to rise. The ujjayi, very helpful on this lift. Exhale, step forward. Hands back, Anjali Mudra. Inhale the arms out. We'll step the left foot back. Both legs are straight. Pelvis is pointing straight ahead. Back foot has a slight turnout. Exhale, bow forward. Feel how even as you bow forward, the back leg. It's like it's it's like lowering you down. So use the back leg to help you. The back connection to the ground at the back leg till your hands find blocks. And then just notice for a moment, did more weight shift into the forward heel? Can you balance that weight as you turn more inward? In this season. We do turn in. All right. And then we to take the arms wide. Reach into the back leg and inhale, rise. Exhale, step forward. Hands back, Anjali Mudra. Inhale, lift the arms. We're coming to Uttanasana, forward fold, some symmetry. As you bow forward, we'll inhale half it, halfway up and exhale, take child's pose. And you, if you can take the, if the knees are okay, you'll take the sit bones toward the heels. If the knees are not comfortable in child's pose, then 
Don't take child's pose. You have the legs straight. You can just sit in Dandasana for a moment. Sometimes this particular pose, the knees are not, not happy because of, you're asking the joint space to really close in the back. And sometimes the knees are like, oh no, 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 that's not it. We can't do that today. It's okay. Practicing a parigraha, not grasping, not being attached to the outcome. Okay, then we'll, um, if you're in child's pose, we'll walk the hands back up. Great. Let's take a, a little series of openers on the ground. So let's come down um, to the floor for a moment. If you need to pad the floor with a blanket, please go ahead and open up a blanket and put it on the ground. And then when you're ready, we're going to lie down on your back. And take the soles of the feet toward uh, and knees apart, Baddha Konasana, this reclined Baddha Konasana for a moment. Arms can be resting out on the ground. And then we'll inhale, lift the knees back up. And let's take, you're going to take your left heel. We've been doing this um, reclined kind of front of the hip opener. Left heel comes under towards the right sit bone. I am going to grab my ankle with my right hand and, and just drop my left knee toward the ground. And then let's bring the left foot back to the ground for a moment. And then can we, let's take the, the little toe side of the left foot to the top of the right thigh. We're coming into a figure four. So you're gonna bring the right knee up, clasp the hands behind the right thigh. For this figure four, relax the lower right leg Use the strength at the top of the right thigh to assist you in drawing the right knee closer. And shift the weight slightly to the right. Relax your jaw and your neck. Great, and then release your hands, bring the right foot back to the ground, arms wide, and I'm going to tilt the lower body to the right so that the left foot might find either the ground or a block. And I might even scoop my right knee up, my, um, yeah, my right knee a little closer up. If you can get the left shin to be more vertical, great. And I still, once I come to the ground, it's not that I want to start ruminating. I still want to drop into my ujjayi. I want to nurture cohesion in my body. I want to nurture being present now.
Then with the next inhale, we're gonna come back up. Exhale, release that. Both feet on the floor. And then we'll take the, the right heel, bring it towards the left sit bone and drop the right knee down towards the ground. Then let's, let's let go of that. Both feet come around towards the ground. And then I'm gonna take the right foot up to the top of the left thigh. Bring either my left knee to my chest and clasp my hand behind the left thigh, or I could just have my left foot up against the wall or a piece of furniture if I don't wanna use my arms. I'm going to shift the weight a little to the, your left so that the weight is not on the side that's getting stretched right now, your right. Using the strength at the front of the left thigh to help draw that that right leg closer to you. And then with the next exhale, I'm gonna release my arms. I'm gonna release my left foot to the floor and then tilt my lower body to my left and either put the right foot on the ground, a blanket, a block, Let's come back up to center. Both feet on the floor, center yourself. Okay, and then let's roll over to one side. Use your arms, push yourself up. And I wanna set up for this kind of reclining pose we've been doing. So um, I'm, I'm probably gonna use like um, the wall or anyway, that door right there. And so you might wanna have something in mind, a door or a wall nearby. I'm gonna take my two blocks end to end. If, if I have a bolster, I'm gonna use a bolster on top of those two blocks, that much height. And, and if that's the case, if I have a bolster on top of two blocks, I'll put two blankets down for my shoulders to be resting upon. Okay, so those of you that have a bolster, you could set it up like this. Um, and so, so if I have that set up, I'll be, it's similar to what you're gonna do with your blankets if you don't have a bolster, but I'm gonna be, pelvis is mainly on the wall side. I take my hands under, lower my shoulders, And then I'm gonna take, you know, I take my arms into this cactus shape. My head is on the ground, my shoulders, the base of my neck is supported on these blankets. So there's that with the bolster. If, if I don't have a bolster, then I'll still have the two blocks. It'd be nice if you have the ability to put I think um, two blankets at least on top of those blocks. 
if you have, you know, if you've got four blankets, I'd probably put maybe three on top, one on the ground. I really like having one on the ground at least because it feels really good in this support. Same position. Pelvis is a little towards the wall. I lower myself, I bring my elbows to the ground, lower my shoulders, feet to the wall, and maybe legs up the wall if I'm using a wall. I want to create some space between the heart center and, and, and the, um, the colon and the pelvis. So I don't want my pubic bone to be lifting up and putting more weight on my shoulders. I want my tailbone to be kind of coming down the backside of that stack. We'll be here for a few minutes. This is not Shavasana, just so you know. And you, and you might take the arms in more of a cactus position, Jackie. See if that, yeah, now take the hands wider. So the hands are wider and, and see, is it, oh, they don't look happy right there, do they? They're not able to really rest. How's that? Is that okay? It looks a little better. And then you could go toward your head as you come out of this. You might try lifting the back of the head and, and walking yourself toward your head rather than rolling to the side. And then once the pelvis is down to the blankets, you can roll to one side and push yourself up and we'll take a twist. We'll sit um, on the ground. And we'll just take a Marichyasana three. So if you'll straighten your left leg, you've got the um, right knee bent. And we're just gonna take a simple twist toward the bent knee. So right hand can come behind you. And then release. Let's switch sides. Left hand behind, turning towards the bent knee. Taking the heart center as well. Can the heart center revolve towards your left? Exhale, come back to center. Straighten both legs. And we're going to come down to Shavasana now. We'll come to Shavasana, and I want to do it because I want to do a little pranayama at the end. 
So coming down into whatever Shavasana you're going to pick today, you might, you know, one idea would be um, taking a blanket and opening it from lengthwise to put down. I really love this one, but it's probably because it suits my body shape. And I like to put a second blanket on top to make a little patio. Sometimes I use three blankets and rest in Shavasana here. And then allowing your breath to deepen. Make a mindful transition to one side. Take your time as you come back into a comfortable seat. We're going to take uh, Nadi Shodna, which I believe um, all of you are, are well practiced in. So just take your time as you come into your seat. And when you're ready, you can bring the, the hands to the nose. The right hand up. And just to begin your practice, breathe in through both nostrils and out through both nostrils. When you're ready, you'll begin on the left, constricting the right. Take your time as you go through Nadi Shodna. And can you can you go ahead and practice this for you know at least 
three to six rounds, depending on, you know, the length of your breath. But we'll balance the inhale with the exhale. Think of your, your thumb ring and pinky finger like little calipers as they open and close the nostrils. So sometimes it's helpful to use the tips as opposed to the pads. After your next exhale left, you can release your hand. Notice the quality of your mind. Join your hands in front of your heart. As we look to stay balanced, to be centered in the space of our heart, Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Remember your pranayama, how it serves you. Nice, let's see, stop.